God a hand clap of praise. Thank God for another day. It's so good to see everyone. If you have your Bibles or your phones, like I do, uh, could we turn to the book of Psalms? The first Psalms, Old Testament. And when you have it, please say amen. Okay, the book of Psalms. And it reads as such. I'm reading from the CEB, the Common English Bible. I like the way it's, it uh, states it. It begins in the Common English Bible. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. No, that's the King James Version. I apologize. Let me get my CEB because that's what I would like to read. Okay, here we go. All right, I'll begin again. I'm an English Bible. The truly happy person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the dis disrespectful. Instead of doing those things, these persons live the Lord's instructions, and they recite God's instructions day and night. They are like a tree replanted by streams of water, which bears fruit at just the right time and whose leaves don't fade. Whatever they do succeed. That's not true for the wicked. They are like dust that the wind blows away. And that's why the wicked will have no standing in the court of justice, neither will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The Lord is intimately acquainted, I like that, intimately acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will be destroyed. Thus ends God's reading. I think we're gonna do our morning hymn this morning. The Lord is blessing me in our bulletin. Right now, right now, 
is he feeds me when I'm hungry. He renews my strength when I want. He comforts me when I get a little lonely. He's my shelter in the time of storm. Well, he won't be up in morning. And he's calling me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now. Let's sing that again. The Lord is blessing me. The Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now, the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now, he woke me up this morning, and he started me. morning church he's so real so real in my soul today he has washed all of my sins away praise the lord this morning church he's so real so real so real yeah thank the lord this morning thank the lord thank the lord would you take your Bibles and turn with me to the 121 numbers of Psalms? Psalms 121, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Psalms 121. Amen. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He would not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thou going out and thou coming in from this time forth and ever forevermore. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, thanking you for our last night laying down our early morning rising, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day, Heavenly Father. Another day in the land of the living, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, there's someone that didn't make it, Heavenly Father. And I'm asking you right now, Lord, to continue to watch over us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, continue to bless Community Baptist Church, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless our leaders, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now, Lord, to go with our children, Heavenly Father, while they prepare themselves to go back to school, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, go with the teachers, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you, Lord, to just protect us, Heavenly Father, from the COVID-19, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to go to every church that stands over your holy name today, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this day right now, Lord. Heavenly Father, there's someone right now that don't have no likes, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you right now, Lord, to go with them, Heavenly Father. Someone, Heavenly Father, lost 
all they food, Heavenly Father. But Lord, I know, Heavenly Father, and we just lean on you, Heavenly Father. Everything would be all right, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to go with my wife right now, Heavenly Father. Go with our children right now, Heavenly Father. I'm calling up on your name right now, Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing me, Heavenly Father, to see this day. Thank you for allowing me to be able to stand here and pray, Heavenly Father. It could have been me dead, sleeping in my grave, but you spared me another day, Heavenly Father. And I thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I ask you to go with our social ministers, Heavenly Father. Go with the deacons of this church, Heavenly Father. The choir members, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, go with our members, Heavenly Father. Someone that's watching us on YouTube, Heavenly Father, may be going through something, Heavenly Father. But Lord, I'm telling them right now, Lord, to lean on you, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord. Thank you for all you do and what you're going to do, Lord. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give me help and 
Jesus made a way. Help me up on time. Jesus made a way. Are you glad? Let the Lord be the way. Are you glad? Jesus made a way. Let the Lord be the way. He made a way. Out of no way. Jesus made a way. Jesus made a way. Jesus made a way. Praise the Lord. How many of you believe that? Whatever you need, whatever we need, yes, we can find it in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is preaching time. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord on today. Hallelujah. If you will stand all over this place, take your Bible and we will be reading from the word today is coming out of John. Amen. John chapter 15 verses 5 through 8. John 15 5 through 8 and I will be reading from the King James. That's John 15 verses 5 through 8. And it reads, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, 
and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in, in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. This is the word of God for his people, and it is blessed. After we hear another selection from our male chorus, the voice you will hear will be that of our own minister, Jeff Eastern. Amen. I know there is a word from the Lord. If you would just stretch your hands, Lord, and just repeat after me, God, use minister E to preach your word. You may be seated in his presence. Talking about Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how I love, how I love, calling your name. Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Every day, every day, your name is the same. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how I love, how I love, calling your name. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus. Jesus, oh, every day, every day, your name is the same. When my trouble surrounded me, and I didn't need to despair, oh, Lord, you told me that you'd be right there. When it seemed all my problem, had just begun I didn't have to worry no more Cause the victory's already been won Ooh, Jesus Jesus Lord Jesus Jesus Ooh, how I love How I love Calling your name Ooh, Jesus Jesus Lord Jesus, Jesus, oh, every day, every day, your name is the same. I remember the time that I felt so all alone, when I needed you, Jesus, all I had to do was call you. Sometime was in the morning, sometime was late in the night. When I got up on these King Jesus, everything showed up was all right. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I love, how I love, all in your name. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, oh, every day, every day, your name is the same. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I love, how I love, calling your name. Lord Jesus, Jesus, oh, every day, every day, your name is the same. There's just something about the name of Jesus. 
Come on, saints. You know when you call on the name of Jesus, something will happen. For Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. And I don't know about you, saints, but these last 17 months within this pandemic, I've been calling on the name of Jesus every day because I know Jesus, uh, he will protect me. I know Jesus uh, will provide for me. I know Jesus will heal my aching body. I know Jesus has saved me. I know Jesus will deliver me, Brother Ivy. I know Jesus will be there in the midst of a storm. I know Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I know Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Give God some praise on this morning, for God is a good God, and he's worthy he is worthy to be praised. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for this day as we have collectively entered into a preposition. Ha <laughs> ha. His courts with praise. With is a preposition. And when you enter into his courts with praise, and then we give thanksgiving unto him because he's been a good God, Brother Jerry. He's been a great God, Reverend Tanya. Good to see you this morning, my sister. God bless each and every one of you. We came here on this morning expecting and anticipating a move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we tap into the glory of God. Uh, let our praise and our worship pull heaven down uh, right here in this sanctuary. Saint. God has something for us on this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. I thank God for these deacons and these associate ministers and for each and every one that has gathered here on this morning. This is truly the day that the Lord hath made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to let the enemy know that our praise is a weapon on this morning, Mother Johnson, because we came together. We came to put the devil on the run today, Sister Thelma. Yes, we did, Sister Crystal. We came to let the enemy know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Whatever you try to bring our way, we're standing on the word of God on this this morning even as the scripture was read abide in me if you abide in me and my word abide in you whatever you ask of the father in my name it shall be given so on this morning saints of God uh, we're going to dwell within uh, the glory of the almighty God glory hallelujah hallelujah if you know me one thing that I have a problem with and that's tempering my passion for the Lord. So please, please, saints of God, if you would just get with me on this morning, because this past week has been a troubling week for me. At 7.15 p.m. on Tuesday, all of a sudden, my power went out because we had a severe storm that came through Wisconsin and hit Milwaukee, something that we hadn't seen in quite a while, and it caught me by surprise. But I believe that God had a reason for allowing that storm to come in because so many times, saints of God, we take the little things for granted. We take the things that we can walk in a room and just hit a light switch and the lights are going to come on. We take for granted that we can go and set that thermometer and that air conditioner going to click in. We take for granted that we got a refrigerator and I can open up the freezer and grab one of my ice cream bars, sit down in front of the TV, TV going to turn on, I can watch a game. We take those little things for granted. But I thank God all this week that he showed up in a mighty way. When my lights went out, we didn't panic because I thank God for a flashlight and batteries. When my air conditioner went out, I didn't panic because he allowed a west wind to come through my windows upstairs and cool the house off. I didn't panic when the power went out because when me and Cassius Lamont got up early in the morning to go take our walk, the sun was already breaking through the skies in the east. I thank God because the stars at night 
shine brightly upon my crib. I thank God because this huge tree that's in my neighbor's yard, less than 10 feet away, the winds came through at a tremendous speed, but not one branch fell off the tree, landed on my house. So I thank God on this morning. In the name of Jesus, he's worthy. He's worthy. Glory. I thank our pastor in his absence, Dr. Demetrius K. Williams, First Lady Robin Williams. We give them praise on this morning. I thank them for another opportunity to stand on holy ground this morning and to present the word of God unto you. I know some of you came to hear, Pastor, but please just bear with me on this morning because I believe the Holy Ghost got a word for you today. It's good to see you, Brother Mike. God bless you on this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Pastor has been preaching a series from the power of preposition and praise. And just to... uh. Just to uh, uh, remind you again, preposition is a word that establishes relation between the subject and the object in the sentence. A, rep a preposition usually precedes a noun or a pronoun and expresses a relation to another word or element in the sentence clause. So on this morning, I just want to preach from that particular subject, but I want to add another clause to the title, Stay Connected. Stay connected. Disciples stay connected. I thank Minister Crawl for reading the text, but I want to highlight that one verse that says, If ye abide in me, and my word abides in you. In is the preposition that gives us access into Christ Jesus, the living word. And if my word abide in you, then whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it. So, Father, right now, in the name of your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for this moment, this opportunity. We thank you for the saints that have gathered under, oh God, your precious anointing, under your glory cloud here at Community Baptist Church within this sanctuary. We thank you for our guests and visitors that are here this morning, oh God. We thank you for just the fellowship of the saints, the love, oh God, the passion that they have for you, oh God. We thank you for every minister, associate minister, every deacon, every usher, oh God, every musician, every disciple, every saint that has entered into your courts with thanksgiving. Oh God, your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. So use me, Holy Spirit, uh, have your way on today. In Jesus' name we pray and let the saints give God praise one more time because he's worthy. He is worthy to be praised. The book of John is one of four synoptic gospels that contains narrative history, sermons, parables, and a few prophetic oracles. It was written by the disciple, the apostle John, around 80 to 90 AD. John being the brother of James, uh, the sons of Zebedee. Everyone knows John. John was the one that Jesus loved. John was the one that laid his head on Jesus' breast. John was the one that was standing at the foot of the cross when Jesus was dying for you and I. And Jesus looked down and said, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. It was John that Jesus entrusted the care of his mother Mary into his hand. It is John, the one that was exiled on the island of Patmos, that the rhema word, the living word, Jesus Christ himself, made himself available, made himself alive within John's presence and gave him three epistles, first, second, and third John, and then the book of Revelation so that you and I would not panic during these times, these last 17 months, because we know that the end is good for us. That is the John that writes this book. So on today, we're going to highlight the scripture from him. John is the one, as I stated, that recorded those particular epistles and the book of Revelation. John is the one who had firsthand eyewitness accounts of what Jesus did when he walked this earth, beginning his ministry at 30 years old. Yes, it was John that was in relations with the Lamb of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It was John that has and tells us in this book 
that Jesus is the only God, the one true God, contrary to popular belief uh, to the nation of Islam and anybody else that will say that Jesus is just a man, that Jesus is just a prophet. No, no, no. It is John that lets us know from the very beginning that Jesus is the deity that Jesus Christ is the second person in the Trinity. For he says in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among men. The Word became flesh and lived amongst men. So John understood that it was Jesus that was in the beginning that spoke everything into existence and now had come down into earth in the form of a human being because Jesus was there with the Father he is the Son and the Holy Spirit. So saints of God, do not be confused during these times when people come your way and try to bring you another doctrine because they are a liar and the truth is not in him. John's gospel is written with a greater theological substance than the other common view gospels, yet equally, if not more, as inspired and important. As I stated before in chapter 1, he lets us know that Jesus is the second person in the Trinity. But John, I love John because he explicitly gives evidence that Jesus is the Logos, the living word, because he said in the beginning he was there. But then before I get to chapter 15, I need to let you know that in chapters 2 to 12, that John shows us while Jesus was here, Mother Johnson, in the second chapter that Jesus said, there's nothing wrong with the saints celebrating. There's nothing wrong with us going to weddings and birthday celebrations because Jesus performed his first miracle in chapter number two when he turned the water into wine. It didn't say that he drank the wine, but he turned the water into wine. Yes, yes, it is John that lets us know in the third chapter that evangelism does not just begin in the church building, but it takes its place out here in the streets as Jesus is encountered by one of the rich rulers by the name of Nicodemus who comes to Jesus in the nighttime. How many of us are out in the streets in the nighttime? In the nighttime. Evangelism takes place in the nighttime. So Nicodemus comes to him and say, hey, what must I do to be saved? Jesus says, you must be born again. Yes, it's in John that in the fourth chapter, John meets the Samaritan woman at the well. All the women should know this, that a conversation ensued and Jesus said to her, let me give you water that you will thirst never again. And let me tell you, revival took place throughout the entire region of Samaria as she went out and told everybody, I've met a man on today. Somebody came through those doors today that needs to meet the man. The man called Jesus on today. Then in chapter 5, Jesus teaches the religious rulers that everything he says and does is from his father and he does nothing on his own. Saints of God, that should remind us that everything that we do and say should come from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why we should be able to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is his, uh, his reasonable service in the name of Jesus, which is our reasonable service. So in the name of Jesus, we go to chapter 6. Chapter 6, John. I love John because John lets all the shorties, all the children, all the teenagers, all the young adults know that they have a place in ministry. As Jesus is preaching and teaching to the 5,000, the disciples said, what are we going to do to feed them, Lord? Hey, right away, here comes a little boy down there carrying his lunch bag. Uh, Jesus, the disciples said, what does he have? He's got uh, two fishes and five loaves of bread. Jesus takes that food from a child. Listen up, listen up, young people. You have a place in ministry. God wants to use you not only in the church, but outside of the church. He wants to use you in the schoolhouse. He wants to use you in your own house, in your family. He wants to use you on the basketball court, the football field, the baseball diamond. Wherever you go, he wants to use you. When your buddies come up to you with that nonsense, talking about you want to take a hit of this blunder, tell him, oh, no, man, I ain't down with that. When he says, come on, ride with me, and you know he ain't got no driver's license, don't get in that car. Look at that ignition. 
If it's pulled out, you pull back. You don't need to be unequally yoked with these cats out here in the streets. So saints of God, young people, you have a place in ministry. And as I move, as I move forward in chapter seven, oh, John shares, he shares with all of us the struggles of, of, of religious leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees, and about the Jews having trouble becoming disciples. Chapter eight, John teaches, he teaches a hard lesson on being judgmental saints. A hard lesson. It is our Lord and Savior who bent down in the dust, Reverend Tanya, and began to write in the sand as men were going to stone this woman because they called her in adultery. What you been doing? What you been doing? You going to accuse somebody else? So Jesus teaches about being judgmental, about casting the first stone. Yes, saints of God, many times we need to learn how to forgive, to listen, to see what the issue is. Because many of us, we still got skeletons in the closet in the name of Jesus. Some of us have tried to bury them six feet under, but they keep pushing the dirt up. Uh, so we cannot be judgmental. And this is what John is saying that Jesus did in this chapter. Then we move on to chapter 9. This is where he heals the blind man with an orthodox manner where he spits into the ground, makes a mud pie, puts on his eyes, and my man can see again. In chapter 10, we have the parable of the good shepherd. I thank God for the good shepherd because it is the good shepherd that knows his voice and another will they not follow. I thank God for the good shepherd, Mother Johnson, because David writes it so clearly from a sister Thelma in the 23rd Psalm when he says the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, yes, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So on today, saints of God, know that Jesus is the good shepherd and we have to listen to his voice. In chapter 11, Jesus exhibits his power over death as he raises his friend Lazarus. Y'all know about Lazarus. Lazarus is a prototype of Jesus Christ himself. But Jesus called him out of the tomb and raised him from the dead and ministered to his sister Mary and Martha. We move to 12 and 13 where Jesus introduces the Lord's Supper as he's preparing his disciples for his departure. Oh, he institutes the Lord's Supper, which you and I today partake of. We partake of the body and the blood, which keeps us in connection and relationship with Christ Jesus. But not only that, he introduces the doctrine of servitude as he takes off his garment, gets a, a pail of water and begins to wash their feet, saints of God. He is letting us know that during this time, we got to continue to care for one another. We got to call for one another. We got to check on one another. We got to take things to one another if they're in need. We just got to care, love, and have compassion for one another and serve them. And then we get to chapter number 14. And everybody right now could come up here and preach about chapter 14 because you know yourself. It is chapter 14 where many of us have been in the presence of Jesus Christ himself at a home going service. Whether it was a family member or a friend or just an associate. When Jesus showed up and said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, uh, I will come again and receive you unto myself. But I love this. I love this chapter because it was Thomas. We always need a Thomas, y'all. We need a Thomas because a Thomas will ask questions. We may sit back and say, man, that was a dumb question. But no question is dumb to the Lord. So Thomas says to Jesus, how can we know the way, Lord? Jesus simply says, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man comes unto the Father except by me. So on today, saints, we need to understand that there's only one way to glory. And that's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now we get to the 15th chapter. Yes, the 15th chapter. And I want to talk about the power of the preposition within the 15th chapter. Yes, the 15th chapter says if. That word if is conditional. So you have a choice to make. The same thing out here. The government says in many states, the governor said, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. 
even as the numbers continue to skyrocket and people are dying every day, even here in Wisconsin, the numbers have shot up to over 1,800. Over 650,000 people are dead right now that are associated with COVID-19. And now COVID got a cousin that done came on the scene called Delta. And you don't want to wear a mask. You sound like a fool. Put that mask on. You not that cute. You not that handsome. Put that mask on. In the name of Jesus, Lord, not only keeping yourself safe, but you keeping somebody else safe. Uh, and I'm going to say this right now to you viewers that's watching me right now. Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Don't just put the mask on. Get the vaccine in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Because whether you know it or not, get the vaccine. We already covered by the blood of Jesus. So ain't nothing going to hurt us no way. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But in this chapter, we look at the preposition in. The preposition in. Oh, I love this. I love this, Holy Ghost. That word, that small word in. Even when we look at our theme, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where that says, if any man be in, if any woman be in Christ Jesus, he is a new or she is a new creation. All that old stuff has passed away and everything else becomes new. And I love what John says, that if you have a choice, if you abide in me, Jesus is talking. Brother Ronnie says, if you abide in me, don't y'all know that a marriage took place in the family of the alphabet? Yes, it did. To form this union, to come up with the word in. The ninth letter in the alphabet, the letter I, which is a vowel. The 14th letter in the alphabet is the N, which is a consonant. Two opposites came together, Deacon Ivy. Yes, they did. And they joined, re they joined union. Yes, Lord. They created a bond. They created access where you and I can come into Christ Jesus. Because he says, if ye abide in me. In Christ Jesus, the living word, and my word abides in you. Then whatever you ask, so that abide, that's dwelling. We have to make Jesus and his word our home. We have to spend time in the word. If you don't spend time in the word, then this word does not connect you to the logos, which is the living word, Christ Jesus. So this is the preposition that connects you and I. Look at your neighbor or look at your spouse or say to yourself, prophesy to yourself. Say, I'm going to stay connected. I'm going to stay connected, especially during these times. I'm going to stay in the word of God because that word, as I stated, is a dwelling place. And we have to dwell patiently patiently in the word of God. That means every day we need to get off of Facebook and put our faces in the book. Oh yeah, I said it. Get off of Facebook. Put your face in the book. Get into the word of God and begin to meditate on it. Then when you go to Facebook and you post, it won't be something out in left field. You'll be able to post some scripture. You'll be able to encourage somebody with the word of God and get some of these pictures off of Facebook. These are not Christian pictures, but in the name of Jesus, let me move on before a stone come this way. But yes, Lord, we thank you even now, oh God. We thank you even now for the preposition in, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to shift just a little bit, Pastor Smith. Because of what did transpire on this week. And many of us experienced it. And even we can see even now. The residual damage that this storm brought our way. 17 months we've been in a storm. A pandemic. Many of you have one storm added on to that storm. Because some of you have family members that have passed. That have gone on to glory during these 17 months. Some of you have had a parent that has died or a close friend, a relative that has passed away. I know for myself, I have, I have. They suffer symptoms associated with COVID and they did not make it. So yes, one storm after another. Some of our children, they've been in a storm over a year, Principal Mike. 
because many of them had to do virtual learning. And for a lot of our students, that just is difficult to focus, especially for our students that are being raised in dysfunctional environments. You got so much, you want me to focus on this laptop and I got my mama back there or my daddy back there doing their thing and I got Negroes running up and down through my crib and you want me to pay attention on a Chromebook? I need to be in a safe environment. I need to go back to school where I feel safer, even where I can get some food to eat. Ain't nothing in the cabinet. I'm tired of eating noodles and hot flamers every day. I need some real nourishing food. We have students that have gone through hell during these 17 months. And really, when they came out of the classroom and went virtual, a lot of our students were not even proficient in reading, word comprehension, the sciences, the math. So can you imagine? Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we have to do everything. But yes, it's one storm added on to another. And this week, this week, there was one more storm, Sister Grisby, one more storm that came through. And yes, it brought high winds and rain, thunder and lightning. And right now, I want to use the analogy that the Holy Spirit has given me of trees. I was hoping that our media ministry would assist me with this sermon today by posting images on the big screen so that you would have a visual. But because many of you have already driven around the city and even on your own blocks, probably just next door to you or maybe right in front of your house, you have seen the damage that has been done to the trees. So while I'm talking, just imagine the image, the image of the tree, the storm that came through at 715 p.m. on Tuesday evening that knocked my power out Wednesday morning. I got up because I had to go to training. So I'm walking down the street and I could not walk on the sidewalk because there was a tree branch that had snapped. So I want to talk about four categories of people during these storms. The first one, I want to talk about the individuals that snap. The second one, the individuals that are broken. The third one are individuals that are split. And then the fourth, time permitting, individuals that have been uprooted. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So I'm walking and this branch has snapped off of the tree. So I got up close to it and I looked at the end and I can see the sharp edges, so forth and so on. But it had snapped. There's so many that have snapped during these 17 months because of the pressures of life that are upon us. The pressures of life, the pressures of maybe going to a job that has been downsized or possibly even being unemployed because your company shut down. Uh, struggling and fighting to get unemployment. And that is, that's a tedious task in itself to get unemployment. Some of us are on the edge of snapping because the children that we have raised are acting a fool, being disrespectful, honorary, rebellious, the whole nine. Some of us are probably on the edge of snapping, some of our young people, because as I stated before, the educational system and being on Chromebooks and not in the classroom, uh, interacting with uh, classmates, so forth and so on. Because in uh, Nevada, the state of Nevada, they had an emergency because they had so many young people committing suicide. Uh, teenage suicide is on a rise because a lot of our young people are snapping because their minds cannot grasp uh, the situations that are uh, uh, surrounding them, the storms that they find themselves in. And many adults are at that age, them at that edge right now themselves. If somebody say the wrong thing to you, you know right off the bat. You might even snap on them. Some of you spouses walking in the crib each and every day because things are not absolutely right. You might be snapping on one another. So yes, one category is the branch that snapped. Then the second category is the limb. The limb, which is bigger than the branch. I think Deacon Jonette was sending me that image as she was walking. 
and a limb had broken off of the tree and had landed on a car. The limb, broken people hurt people. Broken people are destructive. Broken people, mm, in the name of Jesus, say things and do things because many are harboring ill will, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. Do not know how to address it. Yes, some of our marriages are on the edge of breaking up and spouses are going back and forth with each other. Yes, being mean verbally and even almost to the point of physical altercation. We have a rise in domestic violence. That's because people are broken during these storms. In the name of Jesus, glory. So on today, I want to let y'all know by the power of the Holy Spirit that the, 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 the person that is snapping or has snapped and the person that is broken, they look similar. They look similar because, Brother Jerry, when you go down the street and you see how they've been pushed over to the side, when you first take a glance at them, it looks like they're still alive. But they are not no longer connected. There is no more life within them. And, and what is so interesting to me is that when you look at them, the leaves are still green. Yes, yes, yes. We as people of God... Let me, let me tell you this. Many of us camouflage the emotions that we have suppressed within us. Yes, yes. We are broken. We are snapping. But we coming in here with makeup on, our hair whipped. We wearing designer clothes, driving in the coldest car, got the baddest crib on the block. But we're broken. But we're camouflaging everything that is going on within us because we don't want nobody to know. Don't want nobody to know. But in that area of brokenness, because you will not be transparent with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the enemy is gaining access into that area of brokenness. Into that area. Yes, yes. That we come into church the same way. We came in last week. We leave out the same way we did a month ago. And nothing has changed. Because you won't give it to the Lord. You're trying to suppress everything yourself. You won't talk it out with your spouse. Or you won't call another brother and share with him. Or call another sister that won't get on Facebook and put your business out there. But you need somebody to talk to. You need somebody to talk to. And snapped and broken people, they resort to other things to numb that hurt and pain. Ah, That's why liquor stores have a booming business right now. That's why the drug dealer walking around, his pockets just as fat as they can be. Yes, because the saints are drinking and smoking too. In the name of Jesus. And, and engaged in all types of addictive behaviors because they are broken. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, camouflage. Camouflage, looking good. Looking good. Yes, I look good sometimes. But yeah, I'm going through some situations. I thank God that I have prayer partners that I can call up and say, hey man, I'm not right right now. Right now, I need you to pray for me. I need you to get a prayer through. But if I know that you're not connected and ain't been connected and I ain't heard from you on the Sunday school line, the prayer line. I ain't seen you over here with Reverend Flowers. I ain't seen you in church. Trust me. You're not getting a 411 from me. Because I need somebody that's been connected to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody that I know that the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous, the righteous person, availeth much, availeth much, availeth much. That means it accomplishes much. It accomplishes. And I thank Jesus Christ because some of us think that, yes, the finished work was on Calvary. But don't you know he's still working for us? Brother Z, Brother Z, he's still working because he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father right now, making intercession for you and I. So there's no reason, there's no reason that we should not be transformed moving forward in the name of Jesus. And then Minister Crawl sent me an image of a tree in Lincoln Park that will split Dr. Mack. 
It was standing, but it was split. Lightning had struck it right down the middle. I even drove by there and it amazed me. Aviana, I looked at it. This is something that you could actually paint on canvas. The tree, a huge tree, was split right down the middle. Mmm, still standing, but torn between two opinions. Oh, yes. Still standing, but torn between two opinions. Still standing, but double-minded. Still standing, your flesh is warring against the spirit. Still standing, but listening to too many voices. Got a voice over here, got a voice over there. Still standing. One day in the word, the next day out of the word. One day in the word, in prayer, the next day on the internet. One day, oh God, praising and worshiping God. The next day, listen to secular music. Still standing, but split. Still standing, but split. Still standing. One minute walking by faith, the other minute walking by sight. Still standing, reacting to situations according to your senses, according to your sight, your hearing. Still standing. Yes, yes. Instead of responding with the word. Anytime. Uh, yes, yeah, still standing. We need to apply the word to every situation in our lives. When, when, when we're in pain, when we're in pain, Mother Johnson, we don't need to go to another book. We don't know to go to medical science we need to go to the word of god see what the word says to us uh, when we're having problems with our kids and trouble in our marriage go to the word of god see what that says about that situation put the word on the situation we got too many too many people saved and unsaved standing but still split in the name of jesus lord and then the fourth the fourth group is the uprooted ones. Anybody here just by a show of hands drove down the street and you saw a tree that had toppled over. A big tree uprooted. How was that possible? Because we understand roots are supposed to grow deep into the ground, aren't they? Deep into the ground. Well, you know me uh, being inquisitive. I walked over to 12th and Capitol where a tree had fallen over onto a house. I went right up to the ground and looked and the roots looked different. The roots had a different color. The roots were broken. It appeared that the roots were fragile. They were fragile. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Are you rooted and grounded in the word? Where when the storms of life come your way, you won't fall? You won't topple over? Are your roots strong? Are you praying every day? Are you meditating and reading the word of God? I would encourage each one of us to open up your Bibles during this time to the book of John. Because the Holy Spirit is speaking through his word, Ronnie. The book of John will speak to us because Jesus is speaking out of those words so that our roots can grow stronger in the word. And we will not be swayed by the storms that come our way because the storms are still coming. There's going to be another storm added on to this storm. And another storm is coming your way. We are not exempt from experiencing storms in our life. For it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Not only that, but many people have been uprooted because their theology has been challenged. Their theology has been challenged. Because of everything that is going around, looking at the news, what's being reported, looking at situations in our city, their theology has been challenged. It has even been compromised. They're saying, where is God? Even saints are saying, is God still in control? I don't know who to trust now. Mm, that's because you got weak roots. Yes, yes. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. 
Lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways. Glory, hallelujah. We got too many young people that are disconnected. Too many people, period. But the thing that troubles me, that concerns me, and anybody that knows me, I'm on prayer lines at 2 and 3 in the morning, praying, praying in that hour where the demons, where the imps, where the, the, the wicked spirits come out in that fourth watch between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. because the devil has stepped up his game. He's no longer just stealing and killing, but he's destroying lives. Look at all the lives he's destroying in this city with our young people. So I'm up early in the morning, standing in the gap, praying in the spirit as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance during that fourth watch because believe it or not we have a principality hovering over the city of milwaukee it is just not an imp it is just not an evil spirit it is just not an ordinary demon but it is a principle it is one of the hierarchies uh, oh from the gates of hell and many of us don't even realize it yes glory Glory, but we're going to serve notice on the devil today <laughs> that we know your strategy. We see your plots uh, and we're going to stand in the gap in the name of Jesus. So on this morning, we thank your Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit wants us to know, saints of God, if you find yourself falling into one of those categories and don't be ashamed if you are in one of those categories because there is still hope uh, there is still life uh, because God is a good God. God is a merciful God. Don't hold your head down. Just go to the Lord in prayer. And the Holy Spirit wants us to know on today that we have an arborist. We have an arborist. An A-R-B-O-R-S-T. An arborist. An arborist is one, oh God, in the science that takes care of greeny plants and especially trees. And especially trees. The Holy Spirit wants us to know on today, Jamarion, that Jesus Christ is our arborist, that Jesus Christ will reconnect uh, the broken limb, uh, the broken branches that have fallen out, that Jesus Christ will stand the tree that's been uprooted, stand it back up again, that Jesus Christ, our spiritual arborist, will bring new life to the branches, to the leaves, to the tree itself. That our Lord and Savior, the arborist, Jesus Christ, will give us new life. For he said that I came, that you will have life uh, and have life more abundantly. But all we got to do, saints of God, is get into his word. Because if ye abide in me and my word abide in you, whatever you ask uh, the Father in my name, uh, I will give it to you. So throughout the gospel of John... Jesus is speaking to you and he's speaking to me. Jesus gives us the seven I am's. Uh, the seven I am's in the book of John. When I first heard the I am, it was recorded in the book of Exodus uh, in the third chapter, verse 13, where Moses went to God. God called Moses his friend. Moses said, Lord, what should I say to the Israelites uh, when I go to them and I let them know that they're going to be delivered? God looked at Moses and said, simply tell them I am. Just let the devil know that God, I am. Let that pain in your body know I am. Let that wayward child know I am. Let that broken marriage know that I am. Let that disease know that I am a healer. Yes, let that unsaved loved one know that I am. I am saved. I suffered and died on Calvary for the permission of your sins. So John records the seven I am's. He says in John 16, 35, I am the bread of life. There's no reason why we should be spiritually hungry on today because I am the bread of life. John 8 and 12, 
I am the light of the world. There's no reason why we should be walking around in darkness because Jesus is the truth and the light. In John, the oh God, the 10th chapter, verse 9, he says, I am the door. The door is open for anyone that does not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just walk on in the door, Dr. Mack. In John 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. Thou shalt not want whatever you need. I got it. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, your provider. I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, your healer. I am Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, your peace. I am uh, that I am. Uh, in John eleven twenty five, Jesus says uh, that I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, we have the free gift of salvation. For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In John 14 and 6, uh, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man comes to the Father except by me. In the name of Jesus. In John 15 and 5, Jesus said, I am the true vine, uh, and the Father is the husbandman. I want to let you know that we have an arborist. Uh, so if you're broken on this morning, if you're split on this morning, if you're snapping on this morning, if you are brooded this morning, just call on the great I am that I I am in the name of Jesus because he is a deliverer. He is a savior. He is a healer. He is a peacemaker. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's bread on the table. He is what he is. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the lion of Judah. We give you praise on this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, oh God. We praise you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Father, thank you. I thank you for Zachary on this morning. I thank you for healing his body. I thank you in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for Sister Patricia Calvin, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. You brought her out to hospital, oh God. Thank you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise on this morning. Thank you for Mother Johnson. An example, oh God, of faith, of faith, from faith to faith and glory to glory. Thank you, Sister Crystal. In the name of Jesus. Hey, yes, oh God, his hand is on you. His hand is on you. His hand is on you. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Yes, oh God. Aviana, yes, oh God. In the name of Jesus, use your gift. Use your gift to draw. Paint pictures that will minister. In the name of Jesus, your paintings will preach the word of God. Your paintings will preach the word of God. Your paintings will bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Glory, glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I pray. You fathers up there. You fathers up there. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We lift you up right now in the name of Jesus. That you continue to stand firm and be the cornerstone of your family. Keep Jesus in your heart as you raise your children in the name of Jesus. And Father, at the end of this month, oh God, as the men converge on North Division, as men stand up, 300 men like the 300 Spartans, oh God, let your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus come through in a mighty way. As men stand up, as men speak up, oh God, 
in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. And then as men stay up to face the challenges within this city and our community, O oh God, transformation will take place in the name of Jesus. Stay connected, saints of God. Stay connected so that the word will transform our way of thinking, our way of thinking, our way of acting, our way of navigating through these storms so that we can still have the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord, the preposition of OF, is our strength. The Lord's joy is our strength. Yes, yes, I love the power of the preposition because by his stripes, preposition being by Jesus' stripes, we are healed today in the name of Jesus, oh God. But we thank you for the preposition in, oh God, that connects us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, not only here under the glory cloud, but out there that are viewing me right now, in the name of Jesus, if you're at that place where you have not called upon him, where you have not confessed your sins, uh, and accepted him into your heart, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come in. He's standing at the door and knocking, Sister Rosby. I hear him knocking on somebody's heart. He's knocking because he knows you've been disconnected. And he wants to connect you back. Connect you back. No longer camouflaging the things that hurt us. The things that bother us. Mm. The things that cause us depression and oppression. The things that cause us to snap. The things that break us split us and uproot us. Is there one today? Is there one today? Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you even now for your word and your rhema word, oh God. Mm. Thank you for the move of your spirit here on this morning. Oh, yes, God. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, you said that. He that dwelleth within me, he that dwelleth within the secret place of the Most High God, mm, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So on today, God, I pray for everyone that's represented here this morning and even viewing us by YouTube, oh God. Father, that they stay under your covering even now, oh God. Father, anyone that has been disconnected, reconnect them even now supernaturally in the name of Jesus, oh God. Ah, let your living blood, let the life of Jesus flow through them even now. Touch them, Holy Spirit, in a special way that they know this is the moment. This is the moment that you change them, that you transform them transform their way of thinking no longer conforming to the world and the things of the world no longer being disillusioned by the illusions of the world but being transformed by the renewing of their minds in the name of jesus i lift up the men in your family right now i lift up your son right now in the name of jesus who is struggling who is struggling and doesn't know how to reach out. But I pray even now that a ministering angel whispers into his ear, silencing the voices, the other voices, but letting him know that he is a man of God and that there is a divine purpose for his life. And there is a destiny, not only as a husband and a father, but in ministry. God wants to use him in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God loves you, Sister Margaret. God loves you. Yes, oh God, glory, glory, hallelujah. So we thank you again, oh God, 
as we just give you the glory and we worship you because you are the one true God. You are El Shaddai, the almighty God. You are El Elyon, the most high God. And we thank you. We thank you. I thank God for every young man under the age of 21 here this morning. I pray God's anointing on your lives even now. As you re-engage in the classroom, that you will stand firm on your identity of who God has created you to be. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over any fear and anxiety that will creep in and try to cause you to compromise who you are, who your father has taught you to be and raised you to be. No more compromising young people. You can be different. You can be different in the name of Jesus. We are a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. We are different from the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. So glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Cheryl Lynn Randall, thank you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because your word has fallen on good ground this morning. Not amongst the thorns, not amongst the the rocks but father your word shall take root even now oh god mm, and bring forth good fruit and it is in the precious and mighty name of jesus we pray let all god's people say amen and amen yes lord